I'm challenging the religious, social, cultural norms that try to control women's bodies. जब डांस में मैं आई और उस फ्रीडम ने मुझे बताया कि ये तुम्हारी बॉडी है इसको ओन करो। I feel really lucky that I always had music growing up. It was a lifesaver for me. I was a child, we were always taught that if you are no longer a virgin by the time you are married, then you are worthless. And it's the same thing that also my perpetrator said when he raped me. I believe that for many, many years, and that kept me quiet for many, many years. I am Kartika Yahya. I am an artist and cultural activist from Indonesia, and I am also a sexual assault survivor. I experienced sexual violence for the first time when I was six years old. It was done by someone in my family who we all trusted. I was quiet about it until late in my 30s. I began to have a lot of mental health issues growing up. So when I was 13, 14, I started uh, drinking, using drugs. I was so, fast, and then I fell. so I broke down and then I went into recovery for my addiction in 2009. And that's when I felt that, hey, this music that I have been playing, it has been tremendously helpful in healing me. What if I can use this to say something to other women who experienced what I experienced so that they can be helped through my music as well? कि जी यहाँ पे तो लड़की होना सबसे पहले बहुत मुश्किल बात है कि आप लड़की हैं और आपने सोसाइटी में ऐसी सोसाइटी में जिंदा रहना है आप देखें कि बचपन से उनको कहा जाता है कि जी बैठना किस तरह से है खड़े किस तरह से होना है बात किस तरह से करनी है मतलब हर चीज में हर चीज में जब टोका टोकी होती रहती है होती रहती है तो वो बॉडी के अंदर आना शुरू हो जाती हैं चीजें बहुत सख्ती होती है बहुत मुश्किल से वो सख्ती तोड़नी पड़ती है डांस के थ्रू आप जितनी जल्दी उसको खोल सकते हैं उसमें कम टाइम लगता है मेरा नाम उजमा अशरफ है और मैं कथाकार हूँ कथा कहानी को कहते हैं और कथाकार जो है वो स्टोरी टेलर है तो ये एक ऐसी क्लासिकल की फॉर्म है जिसे आप थ्रू योर बॉडी एक्सप्रेशंस और मूवमेंट आप वो बात जो है एक्सपीरियंस जो आप करते हैं वो अपनी ऑडियंस के साथ शेयर करते हैं और इसकी खूबसूरत बात ये है कि थोड़ी फैमिनन Most women aren't heard. Most women don't have the agency to be able to speak up, and they're not even given the platform or the space to do it. You know, um, and these are women who who are screaming inside, but they're they're not heard. Um, for those of us who can, we should speak up, and I think it's as simple as that. My name is Yanti Ismail. 
I'm a feminist artist based in Malaysia. I paint women in the nude to take away the narrative from a patriarchal definition of a woman's body that is sexual, that is lewd, that is dirty, that is shameful, um, or that can only be virginal. And I'm reclaiming that gaze and bringing a feminist perspective to how it looks like. I try to challenge the idea of what beautiful is. I advocate for women to be seen more than their bodies. Art helps give you the imagination of what an alternative reality could look like. We see that in our society, if there is a situation like this, if there is a situation like this, then it will be used to the girl, that she will not wear the clothes properly. लेकिन जिसके ज़हन में वो हिवानियत आई है, जिसने वो एक्ट किया है, जिसने इतना जुन कर दिया है, उसके ऊपर हम उंगली नहीं उठा सकते। तो ये आप शुरू से देख रहे हैं, मैं तो अपने बचपन से देख रही हूँ। तो आहिस्ता आहिस्ता ये हमारी भी पर्सनालिटी का हिस्सा बन जाता है, हम चीजें छुपाना शु लेकिन डर लगता है बताते रहो। तो ये सोच बदलने की जरूरत है, बात सुनने की जरूरत है, दोस्ती करने की जरूरत है। पढ़ाई मेरा स्केप होता था, मैं को ये नहीं है कि मैं बहुत कोई पढ़ने लिखने वाली बच्ची थी, वो मेरा स्केप होता था घर से। और उसके बहाने फिर मैं जी कंप्यूटर क्लासेस मैंने लेनी है बच्चों को भी लड़कों को भी उतनी ही प्रॉब्लम फेस करनी पड़ती है बल्कि एस मेल आप कथक करना अगर शुरू कर दें कोई और डांस करना शुरू कर दें जो उनको लगे कि ये लड़कों वाला है कोई भी प्रेशर सोसाइटी का हो घर वालों का हो किसी का भी हो डांस के थ्रू उसको निकालती हूँ बॉडी से। डांस मुझे वो फ्रीडम देता है, डांस मुझे वो रास्ता देता है। In the beginning of my career, I was writing like really dark music, but I was very implicit about writing the lyrics. I didn't want people to know exactly what I was writing about. In 2012 was the first time that I met other survivors. Um, I felt that that was my turning point. I shifted from being a victim to being a survivor. I came out as a survivor where I felt like I cannot be implicit anymore. So the lyric becomes more outwards and I feel like I've evolved a lot and I'm very proud of that. I wrote the song Tubuhku Autoritasku or My Body, My Authority. The music video was very powerful because we asked 39 women to write statements about their own bodies uh, on their bodies. If you are a woman anywhere in the world, you struggle with uh, having ownership of your own body because it's so objectified. I always believe that music has really, really tremendous power because we have a really big platform if we choose it to say something important. I grew up in a family of strong women. However, existing as a Malay person born into the religion of Islam, of course, patriarchy is the environment that I exist in. When I started to grow as a human being in this world, seeing that my place in it 
wasn't what I thought it should be. And that was the trigger of me trying to fight it. Growing up, one of the things I've always wished was to have that um, older sister figure of somebody who told me what I was going through. I always say to myself that um, as, as an adult now, I would love to be that for a young person. It's a very simple concept of painting women who aren't thin and white and aren't necessarily able-bodied. I'm telling young girls that um, what you're seeing in popular culture is not the only um, model of, of how a woman should look like. In 2018, I created a community space called Ruang Selatan as a response to the rise of conservatism in Indonesia and the shrinking space for diverse narratives. Uh, it becomes harder and harder for people of uh, minority groups, whether it's women, LGBTQ groups or certain political affiliates to find physical spaces for them to be expressive. Right now, we also have different activities like acting classes, dance. I realized that I have the advantage of having music as a medium for my activism, because activism should be embedded in whatever it is you do. If you are a teacher, take your activism to the classroom, take it to the companies you lead, take it everywhere. The message of equality. So what we have to change is the society. We have to make it a safe space for all of us to speak out. जब डांस में मैं आई और उस फ्रीडम ने मुझे बताया कि ये तुम्हारी बॉडी है इसको ओन करो तो ये एक रिलेशनशिप अपनी बॉडी के साथ बनाना कितना मुश्किल होता है हमारी सोसाइटी में और कितना टाइम लग जाता है इस पे तो वो टाइम मुझे भी लगा वो जो अब बच्चियां आ रही हैं जो काम कर रही हैं उनको भी लगता है पहले उसमें से बाहर निकालने मतलब यूज योर बॉडी उसके साथ दोस्ती करें उसको ऑन करें और जिस खाने में मैं बंद थी उसमें दूसरी लड़कियां बंद ना रहें वो निकले उसमें से एक्सप्रेस करें अपनी बॉडी को वो एंजॉय करने करें अपनी बॉडी को वो ऑन करें अपनी बॉडी को जैसा मैंने किया है और जो कथक ने मुझे दिया है वो भी उसको उस फ्रीडम को उसका मजा चखें I work with an international humanitarian organization in the issue of uh, rights of refugees. Working in human rights in this part of the world is risky. You know, and artists um, who take that stand and, and, and make that position through their art to speak about human rights put themselves at risk. Like for myself, you know, even choosing to, to paint women that are nude um, it is me taking a risk because there are laws in place that prohibit against um, the expression of um, nude bodies as is being seen as pornographic. Mm -hmm. 
I'm not as courageous as many other people. And to me, that's also important for people to, to know that you don't have to take those major um, life-changing steps in order to make a difference. You can find it within your own little spheres of life to take those little steps, but make a stand. Don't just sit by and watch things go by. Apathy is inexcusable.